Now that we're adding notifications to a post owner's activity feed when a like has been added and removing it when a like has been removed, let's see how to add notifications for when another user adds a comment to a given user's post. So let's head to our comments.dart file and wherever we're creating a comment, and that's within the add comment function, we're going to add to it above commentcontroller.clear our activity feed ref and we want to select the post owner's ID for document so we get that from the value post owner ID then the collection feed items and here we're not going to create our own custom ID to link to our document so we don't need to use the document method instead we'll just push on to an auto-generated ID with the add method. So for this map, it's going to have a very similar structure to what we provided when we were adding a notification for a like. So we can basically copy everything from that map and we'll modify it for this one in comments. The type is going to be different. It's going to be of type comment instead of like. Here we want to include the comment data, so we'll have a field for that set to commentcontroller.text. And it's important that we only clear the comment controller's text with the clear method after we actually set our data on the activity feed ref. Otherwise, we won't have our comment put in our document. We'll still have a timestamp. The post ID is also going to come from the post ID variable. Current user will be set to user ID. Current user ID will be set to user ID once again. The same for username, same for profile image. And in this case, media URL will be set to post media URL. So once again, we'll check out the results when we save and attempt to add a comment to one of our posts. So currently, if I look at my Firestore database, I don't have a feed collection. But now let's add a new comment here. We'll just say new comment. We'll post it. So that's added. And for our database, we now have a feed collection linked to a user's ID with a feed items collection with an auto-generated ID and all of the values that we supplied with the comment data of new comment. So that's good. We don't have the ability to delete comments, so we don't have to worry about the opposite operation. But once again, we want to add a conditional to compare the post owner ID with the current user ID. And we want to make sure they are not equal. So we can put the result of that comparison in a variable is not post owner and only in that case do we want to actually add a notification if we're not the one making the comment but for now let's leave what we have here this one notification on feed items so we can make sure that it's possible to actually query for our activity feed as our current user to make sure in the future we can actually display it within the activity feed page. So let's head to the activity feed page right now and we'll build out the basic structure of this page. So it's going to consist of first a header with our reusable header and in the next video we'll see how to create these individual activity feed item widgets. For right now we're just going to use a scaffold in the build function for activity feed state where we'll create our app bar. It'll be set to header, which we'll import. And for our title text, that'll be set to activity feed. And for the body, we'll first have a container widget, where as its child, in order to fetch our data or fetch our activity feed items for the current user, we'll use a future builder. So for this future builder, the future that we're going to resolve 
is going to be provided as, as the result of a function which we'll call get activity feed and we'll execute right here. So we're going to resolve the future directly within get activity feed and get our data here instead of getting it within our builder function. So we'll make this async in order to resolve that future and we'll await the operation activity feed ref which will import from home dot document based on linked on the current users ID the collection feed items and at the end we'll call get documents now I'm gonna add a couple of additional methods in order to first order the data that we get back specifically to get our notifications according to the timestamp in descending order, so the most recent ones first. We'll order by timestamp and set descending to true. And also, one idea is to limit the amount of notifications that we get. The last 50 notifications, instead of loading all of them, we could use the limit method and pass in an integer of 50. So let's save to format this a bit so you can see that a bit better and we're going to put the return value in a snapshot variable of type query snapshot and we'll make sure to import Firestore and from that we'll first want to return our snapshot or we can also return snapshot.documents we just need to provide some return value for our future builder to resolve and actually display what we have in our builder but here we're going to actually print the snapshot that we get it's documents I should say so we can take snapshot dot documents iterate over it with for each and for each doc we're not going to deserialize it just yet but we can print activity feed item and then interpolate the data from doc.data to see that map. Then for the builder we'll get context and snapshot. So here in builder we'll still handle loading by saying if we don't have data, if not snapshot dot has data will display return our circular progress which will import and for now we're just going to return a simple text widget with the text activity feed and in the next video we'll actually build out the appearance that we have here for our notifications so I'm gonna do a hot, hot restart and based off of what we have for our feed items, we should just have one item with the following data. So if we navigate to our activity feed, we should just see the activity feed text. And then in our debug console, we should have our map of data for the new comment that was just added, and we do.